Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. This week we have a heart-to-heart -heart with Indonesia's Ronald Alexander and Malati Deva Octavianti about the highs and lows of being the country's mixed doubles hopefuls. And Tahiti tells us how they are planning to make badminton popular on the French Polynesian island. Tontawi Ahmad and Liliana Natsir are highly revered in Indonesia. Their gold medals at the Rio 2016 Olympics completed an incredible resume that already boasts one world championship title, a hat-trick of all England crowns, and over a dozen Super Series triumphs. The Indonesian mixed doubles pair are role models for their younger compatriots aspiring to follow in their footsteps. Plotting their way to success are Indonesia Masters champions Ronald Alexander and Melati Deva Octavianti, and the duo couldn't have had better mentors than their national heroes. Everyone knows about their success, especially the recent victory at the Olympics. Anyone who follows badminton knows that the highest you can achieve is at the Olympics. Every player wants to reach that height. Their achievements are an inspiration for juniors like us. It gives us focus during training because when we train with them, we understand that this is the standard of a three-time All-England champion. They are truly our source of motivation. Ever since their claim to fame at the Grand Prix Gold event in Balikpapan last year, Ronald, 23, and Malati, who's a year younger, are the country's latest hopes in mixed doubles. Both players are products of Indonesia's high-profile badminton clubs. Ronald plies his trade at Jaya Raya, while Malati dons the colours of Jarum. It was while they were starring for their clubs on the local circuit that their talent and potential caught the attention of the national selectors. Ronald joined in 2012, while Malati entered the national setup a year later. It fills you with pride when you're in the national team. Every athlete aspires to be part of the national setup. It's here that you're given the best platform to compete in the best events on the world stage. So you have to come here first. <laughs> Only when you are in the national team then do you get a shot of becoming a champion. There are so many examples like Tontowi and Liliana. It all starts here, so it's an honour to play for your country. Malati began life at the National Training Centre in some style, clinching the 2012 BWF World Junior Championships crown with Eddie Subaktia. Ronald, on the other hand, competed in men's doubles before national coaches decided in 2014 that a ronald Malati partnership was the best way forward for the players entering into the senior squad. Initially, it was difficult. First was the communication between us, because as partners, we needed to understand each other well. And there was also the rotation on court that's so important in doubles. In the early days, it was tough trying to figure out the right movements. But now, it's easy as we've been playing together for some time. It has been said that attack is the best form of defence. So as a pair, we play an offensive game. But if that's not working out, we'll try other tactics. Naturally, we are an attacking pair. In their debut year, Ronald and Malati tasted success at the Indonesia International Challenge and followed up with a Grand Prix victory at the 2015 Chinese Taipei Masters. The run of title wins was a patient build-up to their latest triumph at the Indonesia Masters last year. Having worked their way to the last 16, the duo knew they needed to seize their moment. We were trailing 11-14 in the first game but we slowly worked our way up and eventually won. That was when I thought to myself that this could be our moment. In the semi-final, we were up against our teammates. We knew how they would approach the match since we trained together, but it was after the quarter-final match that I saw our chance. 
Iya, momennya tuh langsung. Besar. I agree. That was our opportunity. After that, we were very comfortable with our performances. We had to grab our chance in the semi-final against our teammates. We couldn't waste it. In the final, we didn't want to put pressure on ourselves. We just went all out. Thank God, we won. That win gave us a platform to target our next title. In our career, we've won an international challenge, a Grand Prix, and a Grand Prix goal. So for the next one, we're looking to win the next big one. That's the Super Series event. That is our next challenge. We've yet to win a Super Series title, so we'll both work towards it. The top of the podium finish catapulted the pair to a career high of 14th in the BWF World Rankings at the close of 2016. But with success comes rising expectations. A lackluster start of the year has seen Ronald and Malati slip outside the top 20, and the worrying slide has led to some fans questioning their desire. While the pair understands that criticism is part and parcel of being a professional athlete, they hope fans can recognize that the recent below-par performances are not a result of a lack of dedication. All of us in the national team are having it easy. If only people can come over and see how hard we train every single day. At the end of each training session, we're all drenched with sweat right through. So when we lose, it's hard to take in why they're quick to criticize us when we've given our all. But we're not over-emotional about it as it gives us added motivation to get better. We want to achieve more and we're grateful that the fans want us to succeed as much as we do. It will take a lot more to derail the ambitions of the world number 28 duo as they direct their efforts towards the upcoming regional multi-sport event to be held in Malaysia. Looking ahead, the SEA Games will be our next focus. Our coaches already told us that they want us to win it, so it has become our personal target. But at the moment, we have four pairs looking to be selected to compete, but nothing has been decided by the coaches. But if we do get selected, the SEA Games goal will be our ambition. Ronald Alexander and Melati Deva Octavianti will only get stronger from their experiences. And that can only be a good thing for Indonesia badminton. Time to test your badminton knowledge. In this week's trivia, we want you to name the only home player to successfully defend the Chinese Taipei Open men's singles title. This shouldn't be too difficult. We'll reveal the answer after the break. When we return, Shuttlers from Tahiti tell us about their passion for badminton and their hopes for the sport on their paradise island. With digital innovations, shuttle time is now more fun, engaging and accessible than ever. So get connected to BWF's Badminton Schools program. Find out more about BWF's grassroots initiatives on these platforms. Download the app, visit the website and get active on Facebook. Your gateway to shuttle time has never been so easy. Before the break, we asked you to name the only home player to successfully defend the Chinese Taipei Open men's singles title. The answer is Cho Tianchen. The Chinese Taipei ace clinched the home title in 2016 after defeating China's Chao Bin in straight games. He became only the second home shuttler to win the men's singles crown since Fung Pramadi in 1999. This year, the world number six clinched victory at the Yonex German Open before winning in Taipei again. In doing so, 
the 27-year-old became the first home player to claim successive men's singles crowns at the Chinese Taipei Open. In the last decade, the fastest racket sport has extended its reach across the world, and Badminton Unlimited has traveled the globe to bring you inspiring stories of developing badminton nations. From Nepal to Croatia, to paradise islands like Seychelles and the Maldives, these countries have shared with us their love of the sport and their fervent efforts to grow the shuttle game in their country. This week, we put the spotlight on the French Polynesian island of Tahiti. Tahiti Badminton exists since uh, 11 years now, so uh, I was part of the, of the team who created Tahiti Badminton Federation. <laughs> and in 11 years, we become the third nation in the Oceania, uh, just behind Australia and New Zealand, and we are very proud of that. Uh, we were far, we start from nothing. Being a relatively new sport on the island, badminton is not high on the activity list for the 245,000 Tahitian inhabitants. Although the sport may not be as popular as favorites like football and volleyball, badminton has its unique charm and some of the islanders have fallen under its spell. I started playing badminton when I was nine years old. My brother, Antoine, used to play at a sports hall in Tahiti. I went to try it. I found it to be a really fast sport and I enjoyed it very much. I love badminton. Before badminton, I used to play a lot of team sports, like football or volleyball. But I wanted to try out an individual sport. Badminton was my choice. The conditions at the Badminton University Club of French Polynesia, where I started to play, were really good. I was allowed to play between four to five times per week, and that worked for me. Since then, I got hooked and have never stopped playing. For those who have been selected for the national team, they have had to juggle badminton with their work or school commitments. Despite the challenges in managing time for the sport they love, these shuttlers clock in as many hours of training as they possibly can. I have been training a lot and I am very determined to become better. I try my best to attend as many training sessions as I can. I work very hard and always try to improve. But as eager and as enthusiastic the players are to improve their game, Tahiti Badminton is still in its infancy and there are limited training facilities and resources on the island. Badminton Oceania, the region's badminton governing body, have stepped in to lend support and expertise, making it possible for some players to develop their skills overseas. It was great because it allowed me to travel. I have been to a training camp in New Zealand in January and I thank them for that because that trip helped me to progress and be a better player. I got to meet and play with players from other countries. I had a good time. The experience has motivated me to keep on training. Tahiti shuttlers travelled as a team for the first time when they participated in the recently concluded Total BWF Sudirman Cup 2017 held in Gold Coast, Australia. Relishing the rare opportunity to rub shoulders with the world's best badminton nations and the sport's finest players, it was an eye-opener for the Tahitian players. It was the first time I flew in a plane and the first time I left Tahiti. It was just amazing to be part of a major badminton tournament. It was really amazing to be around the best players in the world. It was great because we had the opportunity to finally see for ourselves these badminton stars. We were not on the other side watching the TV screen anymore. We were at the same place and we could see all of them. Having witnessed first-hand badminton at its best, the exposure at the Sudirman Cup has motivated the Tahiti shuttlers to strive for greater goals. And it's the hope that their experience at a major badminton event 
can inspire more islanders to take up the sport. My objective as a badminton player is to keep developing and improving. I'm also a coach. I teach the kids and I try to teach them everything I know. I'm trying to pass on my experience and help develop badminton in Tahiti. The local administrators are also working hard to raise the awareness and interest of badminton in Tahiti. The highly successful BWF Schools program, Shuttle Time, has been implemented to introduce the sport to the younger generation. We like people to know the sport and we want to put as many rackets as we can in school in, because I think it's a fantastic sport for at all level. I mean, and you can start and enjoy badminton. Badminton in Tahiti is certainly moving in the right direction. It may not enjoy the same success as more established nations, but the South Pacific shuttlers are determined to promote the sport they love and to continue to aim for higher achievements on the international stage. I hope the number of badminton players will increase over the years and then we will be able to surpass the countries that are just ahead of us, which are New Zealand and Australia. Another goal is to stay ahead of New Caledonia. We also want to reach a higher level in the years to come. We will need to work hard because the players who play at this level are professional players and we are just a small island with not many players. But if you don't try, you will never know. Tahiti may be a small nation, but it certainly has big ambitions. Armed with the desire to build the sport further, badminton looks set to stay in paradise. After the break, we speak to Wang Tzu Wei, Chinese Taipei's rising star in men's singles. Get connected with us on social media. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and tell us what you think of the latest news or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging post for your favourite player on Facebook. If you've got any comments or photos, share them with us on these social media platforms. The finest players will battle it out to book their place in the prestigious season-ending tournament, the Dubai World Super Series Finals. Only the best eight singles players and doubles pairs of the 12-leg MetLife BWF World Super Series circuit will be invited to the Desert City. Six tournaments have taken place so far, so let's take a look at how the women's doubles players measure up in the Destination Dubai rankings at the halfway mark. Despite recently settling for second best in Jakarta and suffering a quarter-final exit in Sydney, Korea's Chang Yena and Lee So-hee lead the pack in women's doubles. The duo's triumph in England and back-to-back -back top four finishes earlier this year was enough to keep their place at the top. Following them are OUE Singapore Open winners Christina Pedersen and Camilla Ritayul. The Danes rose two places after finishing runners-up in Australia. Japan boasts four pairs in the top eight. The Japanese women occupy position third to fifth, and Naoko Fukuman and Kurumi Yonao sit in eighth place. World number four pair Chen Qingchen and Jia Yifan ensure China is not left out of the race. They are in seventh spot. Log on to BWFWorldSuperSeries.com to read all the latest news and information on the MetLife BWF World Super Series tournaments. The Destination Dubai rankings are updated every Thursday following a Super Series event, so check in on the site to keep up to date on the top eight players in singles and doubles making their way to the finals in Dubai. With Tai Tuying sizzling on top of women's singles and Cho Tianchen holding a commanding presence in the top ten of men's singles, 
Chinese Taipei is certainly punching above their weight in the solo disciplines. Tai and Cho's prowess at the elite level serves as an inspiration to those eager to make their mark on the big stage. One youngster who is making steady progress in international badminton is Wang Zhu Wei. Ranked 14th in the world, the 22-year-old is the second highest ranked Chinese Taipei men's single shuttler. I'm quite pleased with my performance so far this year. I have defeated some top 10 players that I have previously never beaten. However, I have also been eliminated in the first round of many tournaments. As a kid, Wang was keen on the shuttle game, but what started out as a recreational activity in his school days developed into competitive sport after discovering he was good at badminton. Badminton was more a leisure activity in the beginning, but as I played on and got better at the sport, it became more than just a passion. Wang showed great promise in his junior years. After claiming silver at the 2013 World Junior Championships and the Asia Junior Championships bronze medal the same year, the Chinese Taipei youngster was earmarked as one for the future in men's singles for his nation. Getting silver at the World Championships was definitely one of the great moments of my junior years. It was affirmation of all the hard work I put into my badminton. Entering into the senior circuit the following year, Wang continued to impress. While others have struggled adjusting to the high competition at the senior level, the then 19-year-old clinched his first crown at the New Zealand Open in his first year. At that time, he became only the second shuttler since Lin Dan to win a Grand Prix men's singles title while still a teenager. Oh. I always remember that moment as it was the first time I've won an international tournament. My opponent in the final was my senior Su Jen Hao, and when I won, I was quite emotional. It was my first triumph and it boosted my confidence. He struck gold again at the Dutch Open two years later, adding another Grand Prix title to his medal collection. The victory last year has spurred him on to seek bigger prizes. But Wang is finding it increasingly tough, with the men's singles field having an abundance of talent. I think the men's singles scene is getting very competitive, with many strong players emerging. Look at India's Kidambi Srikan. He won two Super Series titles in a row. There's also a lot of young players from other countries coming up, they are strong players, and I take note of their progress. This year, Wang reached two Grand Prix gold finals, the Yonex German Open and more recently, the Yonex Open Chinese Taipei. Although he finished runner-up in both finals, facing his more accomplished senior Cho Tianchen on both occasions provided a silver lining. When you walk on court, you just want to play to your best, so whether your opponent is your countryman or not doesn't really make a big difference. Perhaps psychologically, you are more at ease because you are familiar with your teammate. What's good though is that after the competition, we went for a meal and discussed our match and talked about areas in which I could have done better and improved on. His runner-up finish in Taipei saw his world ranking climb four places to 14th, a career high for the young gun. The recent good results have motivated Wang to push ahead further as he seeks to make a breakthrough at the elite level. I hope my ranking will continue to rise. However, it's important to take it step by step and continue to improve. My goal this year is to break into the top 10. His ambition for the remaining year is not too far off the mark. And if Wang Zuwei can continue to develop his game, the men's singles field will have another stern competitor in the mix. Let's take a look at the tournaments coming up in the next few weeks in our Badminton Unlimited calendar.
Next week, we find out all about the Fu Kok Kyung International Cup as badminton legends gather for a weekend of fun and competition. See you next week!